Getting to spend time in the forest is like coming home for me. It's a place I feel most calm and peaceful. We all have an emotional connection to forests. We don't always connect emotionally to the box that lands on our doorstep because we're more excited about what's in it. What we're realizing more and more is that those products cannot be without the existence of forests. 90% of the wood that we use comes from private forest landowners. A lot of people think about forest management as just harvesting the trees and then you're done. But sustaining forests is at the heart of what we do. So they continue to provide wildlife, biodiversity, clean water, recreational benefits to incentivize forest owners and managers to manage those forests well so we can make the products that people use and need every day. We're in northwest Louisiana. We're on a 2,600 acre family forest. So this is a young pine forest. These trees um, are four to five years old. They were planted after the stand behind me was harvested. What's really important about this young pine forest is a lot of the species in the U.S. Southeast and across the country need early successional habitat or young forest as well. A couple that quickly come to mind are, are two neotropical bird species that, that nest and breed in these young forests in the springtime. Uh, one is called the prairie warbler, the other one is the yellow-breasted chat. A good, sustainable, diverse forest has got a mixture of old forest, young forest, and then different types of trees within those. Things are always shifting and changing, and that's what makes these landscapes so vital, not only for wood supply, but also for wildlife habitat. This is an 11-year-old, unthinned loblolly pine plantation. As we actively manage landscapes, it's critical that we get in here and do these selective thinnings to open up and to release these trees. Not only is it good for the residual trees that are left, but they're great wildlife enhancements. This is about active forest management. This is about you know, planting trees, what, 11 years ago, and then coming in for the first thinning. So what will happen is um, an operator will come in a harvesting machine and it will thin, it will take out every fifth row. It releases those canopies and it releases these trees to get bigger to grow to that salt timber class. Soon after that track gets thinned, that's when you really get your biodiversity. So it's critical that landowners do those first thinnings as soon as possible. There's thousands of plants and animal species out here, some of those being very rare. And so it's important to recognize and to celebrate these lands. We have the opportunity to influence the landowner to provide technical resources and to help them as an extension of the work that we're doing that hopefully will sustain those forests long into the future. Prescribed burning is probably one of the most important civil culture tools that a landowner could use on their property in the U.S. Southeast. It was a very natural part of the system and today, fire has been removed from the landscape for the most part, and it's so important to get that back. A lot of times, fire gets a bad name, but it is a natural part of the southeastern landscape. A lot of these tree species, most of the wildlife species, are dependent on that. It starts that regrowth. The history of stewardship within international paper is really looking at forests and how we can sustain working forests. And over time, we have really come to see that in valuing that natural capital, it's not just about the forest, it's about the whole system. And so when we think about the system, we're also looking at the nexus of forests and water. So up here on our left, is what we call a streamside management zone or abbreviated an SMZ. So what's really neat about SMZs is they not only protect water quality and all the wildlife that is, is dependent on that, but they also provide a critical diversity on the landscape. 
When we have healthy forests, we have a healthy system for water quality, for water quantity, and for ensuring that that resource is available to everybody in the community who really needs it and uses it. The forest landscape that we rely upon has a lot of different ages of forests, species within those forests, and uses. It's a very dynamic landscape that relies heavily on sustainable forest management. It's really cool how these tracks play into that whole mosaic of really what makes a sustainably managed track. Our Vision 2030 goals and targets are our North Star for how we're gonna deliver sustainable outcomes through a business strategy. Forests have a tremendous opportunity to be a natural climate solution because they have this ancient technology called photosynthesis, which allows trees as they grow to absorb carbon dioxide. And as forests grow and mature, particularly with sustainable forest management and conservation approaches, they can sequester more and more carbon. Forests as natural climate solutions is not a new concept, but it's one in which we have just started to think more about leveraging, particularly because of our opportunity to help mitigate climate change and to create this more sustainable future. So it's important to us to have ambitious corporate goals and targets. We have a tremendous opportunity to continue to create positive impact through every step in our value chain. Investing in people and communities is critically important. And sustainable operations, this is where we think about water and greenhouse gases. And then finally, renewable solutions. These are our products that we are really looking to contribute to this low carbon bioeconomy of the future. That's where we pull in all of the aspects of our value chain that have an element of sustainability running through them. When I visit a working forest like this, when I see landowners planting, growing, harvesting, and then planting again, when I see the wildlife, the biodiversity, the water protection, when I see those products being used by, by everyone every day, when I think about the amount of carbon that's being stored in these forests, to me, that's what sustainability is all about.